Hello everyone and welcome back to Everyday Husband Quotes, the channel for marriage advice, marriage entertainment, and everything else, marriage. Hey, hey guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. So Chris Williams from Lifetime's Married at First Sight season 12 is saying that Lifetime hired a love and hip hop producer to help produce the show Married at First Sight. And again, this is for season 12. But that's not the issue, okay? The problem is Chris is saying one reason they hired this producer is to encourage the drama he was surrounded by and two, to paint Chris Williams in a negative way. Now, this is all coming from Chris Williams, but here's what I think about the whole situation. You know, I don't think that it's too far-fetched from the truth, but what I do think is far-fetched is Lifetime hiring someone just to encourage the drama between Chris and all of his shenanigans that he brought to the show. So before we get into this video, Chris did post something on his social media account and it says, I turned down a few interviews from your favorite networks. Also, I was offered a spinoff show after my contract with that show ended. Y'all hey for me bought me major bags to my front door. I know my worth. The bag has to be big. The two episodes I wasn't on the show, and I'm thinking he's talking about the last two reunion. I believe it was a three-part reunion, and he's talking about the last two episodes of the reunion that he wasn't on. He says that the ratings dropped to 24 out of 150 channels. When I was on it consistently, top four every week. So he's saying that when he was on the show, Lifetime's Married to Medicine season 12 was top four every single week. And he says that no season saw those type of ratings, that this was the most watched season in the history of the show. So before I show you guys this clip, let me know what you all think about all of this. I've given my opinion. Leave yours in the comment section. As always, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Um, he closed the door and it was like with an attitude. She was like, yo, she's always in here. Fuck with you like that. And you sit here trying to check me. I just felt like it was out of place. So when they kept going, I know me. I have PTSD. If you get me, I, it takes a lot to get me riled up. But if you get me riled up, I will fucking go explode. Like, I will fucking explode and I will go fucking overboard. That's me. I don't care. Like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Don't give a fuck about any of that. Let me so finish. Let me, I, I do have a... Okay. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Hold it. Don't, 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 don't lose it. So... I was, that's just me, you know what I'm saying? So I knew, I was like, yo, if they keep going, I'm going to go up on everybody. And that's what ended up happening. We get to the dinner. It's a, it wasn't a coincidence that the table, the seats were sitting across from us directly. It was obvious that it was set up, you know what I'm saying, for an incident to take place. They were not coming. That's why they came late. When they came, they sat down. He didn't even eat dinner. It was straight, yo, let me address you. Now, let me say this. From a man's standpoint, Two things. One, he should have said something for his wife. But two, he was late. Okay. I was antagonizing him on the bus purposely because I didn't want to just hit him on the bus. I wanted him to get mad enough. My lights turned out. Um, I wanted to get him to get mad enough where he hit me first. And then we went from there. My hands are a lot licensed weapon, so I'm not going to just hit somebody first. Like, I, I wanted him to hit me first. I, that's why I was purposely hitting him like that. But anyway, so um, so we're on the he, He's there. Only reason why he said something was because production said you gonna, they was trying to stir up stuff. They was instigating. They said, you're going to let him talk to your wife like that? He was like, you know what? I'll show him. Where I'm from, if you're in a discussion and y'all both sitting down and one of y'all stand up during the discussion, that means you're trying to get an upper hand and I felt like I was going to be attacked. Now, whether that was the case or not, that was a different conversation. Whether that was the case or not, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you, the moment they stood up, I felt threatened. And people say, oh, yeah, he tried to put on a show because Vince held him back. That wasn't no... If Vince didn't hold me back, I was going to jail in Vegas. That is no, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. I was going to jail in Vegas. That's just what it was going to be. Um, okay. But um, I felt I didn't, I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what he was, what was going on, or any of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not threatening him or anything. I'm just telling you what happened during that scene. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's what I have to say about that. So I know that in one of your posts you had stated you out. Did you kind of like do any type of, I don't know, research when it comes to reality television? I personally have never been on TV myself. I don't know anything about that world, but based on some of the reality, reality shows, shows that I've seen, I love Married at First Sight. I've watched other shows. And I know that there has to be fabrication of reality in order for them to get ratings. But, so did you take that into consideration when you decided, okay, I'm going to participate you know, in this? Because I feel about, like sometimes... We're talking about huh? lifetime. We're talking about lifetime. <laughs> and we're talking about a show that you if people going on to find love. You don't think this is no love and hip hop for you. One of the producers, the producer that gave the cue cards to Clara and Virginia was from love and hip hop. She was from love and hip hop. From love and hip hop. One of the producers that was over the couples was from love and hip hop. You don't think that that's what's going to happen. You don't think that that's what's being set up. You know what I'm saying? That, that I came in, I said, Hey, yo, I'm coming for love. Whether that's a different conversation, whether I should have did it or not, that's a different conversation. But what I'm saying is, you, that's not what you're thinking. You're not thinking, hey, yo, I'm coming on here, you know what I'm saying, for drama. So, so to that point that you just made, if you said that they sought you out and you're thinking that, okay, this is a show where people go on it to legitimately find love, then when they sought you out, I thought I heard you say something that your living situation was already a little bit complicated. Um, and whatnot. Why did you agree to do that? Were you like really looking for love and thinking? Because I can understand now where you're like, oh, they really chose for me to be the villain in this. And so they set it up in a way where everybody essentially hates Chris. But um, I, I don't want to attack you in any way, but I just want to kind of bring it around to like. I, I mentioned where it and I answered that on, on the live I did last week. So basically, and oh. I'm the one that said it, I'm the one that mentioned it, I'm the one that told myself, nobody has ever dug anything up and said, oh yeah, what about this? No, I've said it and I'm the one, I'm the reason why you know that, it's because I said it. I openly say when they first saw me out, when they recruited me, I was living with Mercedes. We were broken up, but we were getting ready to split. We caught COVID and it prolonged the time that we were together. Right. I, put the I, saw that. I put the cart before the horse and I'm the person, you know what I'm saying, that shouldn't have did it because of that but i'm thinking yo we've broken up you know it is what it is you know that's that's what i'm thinking you know it had nothing okay. to do with that but my whole thing is you got to look at this i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna get off here why would i incriminate myself and lie about everything else don't make sense why would i sit here and tell y'all y'all didn't know that true ladies when they recruited me or she we lived together why would I then lie about all the other stuff? Why would I lie about the stuff about Paige? Why would I lie about the stuff? I. Why would I lie about the, the Eric and Virginia stuff? Why would I lie about that? I'm telling you from reliable sources, people, every conversation I had with certain individuals, I fucking recorded the shit. I don't gotta lie. I wouldn't make that up. That's why they ain't came out and said anything because they know I, I will fucking put the shit out. I don't give a fuck. I'm just, I'm just being real with you, man. <clears throat> yeah, I see that. I, I, I understand I'm not that. I think people... myself and and then say, oh yeah, no, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna lie, make up stuff about other people. I ain't got, I ain't gotta do that. I'm gonna do that at all. I'm gonna tell you how it is. This is what I did. Guys. I, think, I think you definitely exposed a lot of things that people like viewers like me did not know behind the scenes and obviously a lot of us were thinking that this was a legitimate show about love and unfortunately it seems as though there's some element of ratchetry and some element of deception that's going on and it sucks that you kind of had to be painted in a negative light i don't necessarily agree with all of your actions but again i don't know the real I, truth i, I only I know what either and the whole thing yeah. is, I won't apologize if I start something, which I'll never start anything because I know, I know me. I'm telling y'all, I know me. I know I am. I'll never start anything with anybody, um, but I'll finish it. And that that was the situation. I, I'm not going to apologize, which I shouldn't even have apologized to them in the first place. But I'm not going to apologize for reacting to you antagonizing me. You need to take responsibility for yourself.